I am Hunter Harrell, and I'm Catherine in Proof. My name is Mitchell McHugh, and my role in Proof is how? Hi, my name is Madison Berry, and I play Claire in Proof. Uh, my name is Bristol Barnes, and I directed Proof. Awesome. Uh, well, firstly, uh, I guess I'm just curious about what the most rewarding and also challenging uh, parts were of being a student director. The most challenging part was just not knowing things. Um, I've been a scenic designer before I've been a director um, at college, so I know what scenic design looks like from a beginning to end process, but I don't know what everything looks like from a beginning to end process. So I think uh, something I had to learn to deal with was just being upfront with people and being honest and being like, I don't know how a Q to Q is run, so I'm hoping you, my stage manager, will like <laughs> help me out on that. Um, the most rewarding was just getting to work with so many excited and like talented and fun people. Um, I think that everyone I got to work with on the show was just such a blast to be around because everyone, when you're doing something for free, you're doing it because you love it. And when you're doing something that isn't even professional, um, like I would consider the department a lot more professional than what we put on because what we put on is very low budget. Um, you're doing it just because you want to put something up on stage and see it. My favorite part so far has honestly just been getting to hang out with the other members of the cast. Um, just like bonding, I think, in a small cast show, you get to know everyone really, really well and get to like create really close connections, which is cool and fun. I mean, it's a really small crew. Really small frustratingly small um but everyone was so in it and that's what i love and not to name names but any time i got to work with a certain person in a cast i felt so inspired and tripped the fuck out to be honest because I, the journal that i used to write like my run notes in that bristol would give is the notebook that I used for acting one, um, Todd made us write entries uh, for acting one, and I, I was like, oh, like all of them were like in the front of the book, and I would look through them and I would write little notes for him, and I don't know, it's a very surreal experience um, being on stage. And, uh, this show in particular feels like Center Stage's debut since COVID. We've obviously had more shows since then, and we've had shows in this space and everything. And they were great, they were awesome, they were amazing. Um, but having Todd in the cast has been amazing and awesome. And it's been a really great, great way to connect the student organization with the department and the faculty. We've been working alongside with them a bit closer than we have in previous years. And I've really enjoyed getting to combine our forces and figure out ways to say, oh, you know, we're going to do this and you can do that. And just collaborating in a way that feels like, okay, we're back. We're in space. We're doing things. It's really cool. Could you tell us a little bit about how your character and what were some of the challenges you experienced trying to play that character? Yeah. So Hal is a, he's a, he's a cool guy. Um, He's, he's complicated because humans are complicated. And I think the, ch like, the challenges I've experienced trying to play him have been trying to capture, like, like because uh, as people, we have multiple confl conflicting interests and motivations at any given time. And it's hard to be able to balance those, like with how like there are some scenes where he may have some selfish motivation, but he also may have some, like, you know, benevolent motivation. And it's hard to kind of, like, hold both of those in your mind at the same time and try to portray that. Um, so def definitely just trying to capture the complexity of the character is, is the hardest part. What was it like playing the lead character in the show? The lead character or a character? I feel like Catherine's the lead character. Am I, am I wrong in assuming that? No, you're completely right. But I don't know. I feel like the question is like, so what's it like being the lead? But 
did you feel any extra pressure Absolutely. knowing that Catherine is sort of the main character? Absolutely, it was horrifying. It was really horrifying because I haven't done theater since middle school, so it was like self torture, being like, "Yeah, I'll take on this when I'm in almost every scene, and I'm going to be on stage for, concurrently for two and a half hours." Um, it was a real challenge for me, but it's kind of like doing a really strenuous workout, and you feel like, "Ugh." I can do anything afterwards. I would say my favorite part about cl playing Claire is trying to figure out all the different layers to the character, I guess. Because the story is told from Catherine's perspective, Claire is very quickly villainized in a, hu in a human realistic way. Um, but it's very easy to write Claire off as someone who's just decided that she knows more, she's gonna come in and she's gonna just ruin everything that Catherine has going on because Catherine isn't good enough. And while from Catherine's perspective, that's kind of how she feels about it, it's really human in the sense of Claire is really just trying to help. So yeah, just trying to figure out, humanizing the character and figuring out why she is so particular about things and why she cares so much but never did anything was very interesting to figure out. As Mitchell, do you like Hal? That's interesting because I've actually like, so when you're, I don't know if this is just a thing because I haven't acted very much, but I've found myself often like, I've caught myself having this implicit bias towards Hal. Like when people say things, I'm like, no, like he's a good guy, like he has good intentions. And then I'm like, why am I defending him? He's a, he's a, he's a character, like, but, Overall, yes, I do like Hal. I think he's not perfect. I, I don't think anyone in the, in, the, in the play is perfect, but I think at the end of the day, they're all good people, so to speak. Um, and I think Hal, he does mean well, uh, and he may make some mistakes and be a little selfish here and there, but generally, yeah, I, I'm, I'm okay with him as a person. Yeah. Okay. Have you learned anything from Claire? And do you like Claire? <laughs> um, I, Claire deals with anger a lot because Claire feels as though she's done everything she can for Catherine and is not receiving any gratification or any acknowledgement for her efforts and I feel as though I'm not very a person that deals with anger that often or if I ever do I try not to. I envy her and her ability to speak her mind and say, hey, I am not being treated here correctly, and to say, you know what, fuck it, I, I'm not putting up with this anymore, figure it out. Do you like Catherine? Love. I think about that every time I go on stage. I look up at the lights and then I peer through little panels that are there. And I, and I can like see everybody's eyes like through the little crack, the cracks. And I think about, I hope people will fall in love with Catherine as much as I do, because it is my duty to serve her well. So my name is Joey Kirkman and I was the sound designer for Proof. So my initial inspiration for the show was to do classical music because it's so focused on math and classical music um, lends itself to math. Uh, we have the left and right brain, a lot of people think of like analytical and creative, but um, music actually taps into the connector between those two, the corpus callosum and your brain. The problem was that a lot of the melodies of those songs were too melodic, they were too warm, and I wanted to find something colder, so I started doing more research into percussion ensemble music, mallet percussion, uh, glockenspiel, xylophone, vibraphone. I have a, a percussion background, so that was more um, it was a little easier for me, but yeah, I just, I wanted to create a kind of cold nature while also kind of tapping into um, just being overwhelmed by the amount of thoughts, um, which is why a lot of the transitions are, are classical pieces. Okay, so um, my name is Katie Burns, and um, I'm the co-costume designer on Proof. Everything that we tried on, we talked to the actors about, we were like, how do, you, how do you feel about this? Do you think your character would wear this? What are specific details that you think we should add um, for your character? And so there are a lot of through line pieces like that. There's a watch 
that um, Robert wears in certain scenes in the show that Catherine wears in other scenes um, that holds like a lot of sentimental value. And so we tried to add little details like that that weren't in the script that were sort of came from the actors' performances and how they saw the characters interacting and how they felt about the characters themselves. Um, and so we kind of combined their research on their characters and our research on the period in their characters to kind of create a cohesive vision of all of those things. Um, well, something that was really important to me, because this is something that I think theater in general should move a lot more towards in the future, is being more of a collaborative art. I think um, in big organizations, it's really easy for it to become very bureaucratic, uh, where it's like, I'm doing the, this design and I never interact with any of the actors, even though they're the ones who are walking all over my set. Um, so I was really trying to encourage that like everyone can comment on every single part of anyone's work. Um, so I was really pushing like, oh, well, you know, actors, if you have something to say about, you know, the sound design or the lighting design or the costume design, like, you know, what's your input? Because this is like the house you live in or this is the backyard that you've been in your whole life or um, these are the clothes that you're wearing um, and then also the other way around so I I think it was just really important to me that um, it felt like an environment that anyone could contribute to any part of the um, overall show. The show is kind of left ambiguous in a lot of points especially near the end where we don't know if Catherine has written the proof or if her father has um, it's kind of left ambiguous until the very end, and I didn't feel that ambiguity was a very strong emotion, uh, so I wanted to focus more on the frustration that Catherine must feel, because that to me, there's nothing like stronger in my heart than when you know something is true and everybody around you is kind of telling you that it's not. So I wanted to immerse the audience in Catherine's perspective. Where did you find the Northwestern shirt that Catherine wears in the show? Because that has obvious ties into the narrative. <laughs> so we made it. Um, so we went to the Folly Beach Goodwill, and um, we found a t-shirt that I think specifically said Scranton University Nursing on it in the corner. And I spent all week with a bottle of acetone that I bought at CVS, like scrubbing the um, screen printed logo off of it um, until it was no longer visible. And then we cut out a stencil that we made and we painted the Northwestern shirt and then we um, bleach stained it, we cut holes in it. Um, and that was our finished product. And it was probably the hardest thing to make uh, for the show. We had a couple other pieces that we had to alter or dye and those were all easier than the Northwestern shirt. <laughs> I've learned humility and the way that even if I have really awesome ideas about what I think something should look like, I don't necessarily need to say those to the actors because I'm not, I, I've learned a lot about how directing isn't me putting my stamp on every single part of the production. It's me guiding everyone else to it being their own part of the production, regardless of how creative I am about the project that it doesn't need to be the Bristol show. It needs to be the everyone else show. And I just need to be the person who's looking at it and making sure it's all cohesive and all falls together really nicely. So. Can you just, what's the matter? Then it's, it doesn't work. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Why not? Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. Of course it does. Sure it does. Sure it does. All right. All right. So ready? Yeah. Wait, no. What's the matter? It doesn't work. My name is Todd McNerney, and I played the role of Robert. Uh, I don't know if I'll pronounce it correctly, which is terrible, but Llewellyn probably or something like that. Um, so this was your first time uh, doing a show with Center Stage, um, and I'm curious what it was like uh, working with students that you know you've taught and had classes with, um, and if you learned anything from that. Uh, I learned quite a bit, of, I suppose. Um, so. The interesting thing is, while it is true that it's the first time I've done a center stage play, it is not the first time that I've uh, been acted with students. So specifically, I suppose, what I learned by doing this uh, were similar lessons to what I learn every time I teach. I like 
I don't think students believe me when I tell them this, but um, I actually 100% learn more from them than I teach them. Todd McNerney is um, otherworldly. He is a phenomenon. Um, I don't think I have ever met someone who is more deeply in tune with their art than that man. I mean, I took my very first acting class at the college with him. I worked on my very first project with him at the college. Um, and I really thought he was going to say no when I asked him, <laughs> and he didn't. And he walked a really, he walked the line between being an actor and also being like one of my mentors really well. When he could sense that I needed a little bit of help, he would offer his insight as someone who I took his directing class last semester. Um, but he was very gracious with me. Um, and it was really fun to work with him. And I really hope that I get to work with him again with my one more year I have here at the college. So. And I don't think Bristol or anybody else associated with the production knows this. My family knows this. I actually haven't acted in anything in about 11 years. So there were things like maybe I can't do it anymore. Maybe I don't know what I'm doing. Maybe um, I just got old. Maybe, you know, all of it, really. Lastly, um, what do you hope that audiences take away um, after seeing Proof? I think it's the relationships that really matter the most to me about this show. Um, it, I, the reason it struck so home, close to home with me is I think it's the most realistic depiction of a family I have ever seen in any media. If there's things that you want to do differently than what the characters do because they're a bit of a mess, then, you know, maybe you should do those things differently. And I guess lastly, what do you hope that audiences, you know, take away having some proof? Why does family have to prove anything to each other? And yet, we have to prove we love each other, we have to prove we care, we have to prove we listening. You're a little weird, so maybe that means you're crazy, and then you have to prove you're not. I guess ultimately I hope anyone who's in a family or in a situation or in a relationship where they're doubted or where they're the one who wants the proof, maybe they should reflect and try to accept. I hope that uh, the audience holds their family a little bit closer after watching the show um, and appreciates their family because there's so many complex issues that are brought up in the show and a lot of family dynamics, people not getting along, personalities clashing. Um, but in the end, you know, your family and your friends, the people who care about you, they just, they just want the best for you. It's a very realistic message. It, it's, it's not a like Hollywood happy ending and it's not like a tragedy either. It's just a very human portrayal of multiple characters. It's experiencing grief and betrayal and just capturing everything, trying to capture what's with, within that, which is good and bad and neutral, so. Believe women, <laughs> no. Um, um, I hope there's a closing of the gap between audience and the people on stage that there's a real connection there to whatever they're experiencing, um, familial-wise and friendship-wise, but especially familial-wise. Um, I guess I'll leave it at that. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for asking.